So I'm very pleased to tell you uh, this afternoon uh, that we have completed the biggest trade deal yet, worth £660 billion a year, a comprehensive Canada-style free trade deal between the UK and the EU, a deal that will protect jobs across this country, a deal that will allow goods, UK goods and components to be sold uh, without tariffs and without quotas uh, in the EU market, a deal which will, if anything, allow our companies and our exporters to do even more business with our European friends. And yet, we fulfilled that promise and that we left on January the 31st with that oven-ready deal. Since that time, we've been getting on with our agenda, enacting the points-based immigration system that you voted for and that will come into force on January the 1st, doing free trade deals with 58 countries around the world and preparing the new relationship with the EU. And there have been plenty of people who have told us that the challenges of the COVID pandemic have made this work impossible and that we should extend the transition period and incur yet more delay. And I rejected that approach precisely because beating COVID is our number one national priority and I wanted to end any extra uncertainty and to give this country the best possible chance of bouncing back strongly next year. And so I'm very pleased to tell you uh, this afternoon uh, that we have completed the biggest trade deal yet, worth £660 billion a year, a comprehensive Canada-style free trade deal between the UK and the EU, a deal that will protect jobs across this country, a deal that will allow goods, UK goods and components to be sold uh, without tariffs and without quotas uh, in the EU market, a deal which will, if anything, allow our companies and our exporters to do even more business with our European friends, and yet, which achieves something that the people of this country instinctively knew was doable, but which they were told was impossible. We've taken back control of our laws and our destiny. We've taken back control of every jot and tittle of our regulation in a way that is complete and unfettered. From January the 1st, we are outside the customs union and outside the single market. British laws will be made solely by the British Parliament, interpreted by UK judge judges sitting in UK courts, and the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice will come to an end. We will be able to set our own standards, to innovate in the way that we want, to originate new frameworks for the sectors in which this country leads the world, from biosciences to financial services, artificial intelligence, and beyond. We'll be able to decide how and where we're going to stimulate new jobs and new hope uh, with free ports, new green industrial zones. We'll be able to cherish our landscape and our environment in the way we choose, backing our farmers, backing British food and agricultural production. And for the first time since 1973, we will be an independent coastal state with full control of our waters. Uh, with the UK's share of fish in our waters rising substantially from roughly half today to closer to two-thirds in uh, five and a half years' time, after which there is no theoretical limit beyond those placed by science or conservation on the quantity of our own fish that we can fish in our waters. And to get ready for, those, uh, for that moment, uh, those fishing communities will be helped with a big 100 million pro pound program to modernize their fleets and the fish processing uh, industry. And I want to stress that uh, although, of course, uh, the, the arguments with our European friends and partners were, uh, were sometimes uh, fierce, this, this is, I believe, a good deal for the whole of, uh, of Europe uh, and uh, for, uh, for our friends and partners as well because it will not be a bad thing, in my view, for the EU to have a prosperous and dynamic uh, and contented UK on your doorstep. And it will be a good thing 
Uh, it, will be, it will drive jobs and prosperity across the whole continent. And I don't think it'd be a bad thing if we in the UK do things differently or take a different approach uh, to legislation. Because in so many ways, our basic goals are the same. And uh, in the context of this giant free trade zone that we're jointly creating, the stimulus of regulatory competition will, I think, benefit us both. And if one side believes it's somehow being unfairly undercut by the other, then subject to independent third party arbitration and provided the measures are proportionate, we can, either of us, decide as sovereign equals to protect our consumers or businesses. But this treaty explicitly envisages that such action should only happen infrequently. And the concepts of uniformity and harmonization are banished in favor of mutual respect and mutual recognition and free trade. And for, for squaring that circle, uh, for finding uh, the, the philosopher's stone that's enabled us to, to do this, I want to thank uh, President von der Leyen, Ursula von der Leyen of the uh, European Commission, uh, our brilliant negotiators led by uh, Lord Frost uh, and Michel Barnier on the EU side, uh, as Stephanie Riso, as well as Oliver Lewis, uh, Tim Barrow, Lindsay Appleby, many others. Uh, their work will be available for scrutiny, uh, followed by a parliamentary vote, uh, I hope, on December the 30th. This agreement, this deal, above all, means certainty. It means certainty for the aviation industry 